Looks like I need to remove these six Y screws. And then one Phillips. Okay, with that off of there, there's just some buttons and pieces now that are free floating. Get this out of the way. These shoulder buttons. It looks like this little metal strip is what gives it its springiness for the button. Pull those out of the way. Ooh, look at that. These side pieces come right off. Let's just remove those. There's a third screw in some of them, apparently, that goes right there. These little clips need to be pulled back on each side on this particular type of ribbon cable gate. And then that cable should pull out. There we go. Motherboard looks clean, good. I'll touch up the speaker a little bit, but otherwise that looks like it's in great shape. These buttons are a little bit sticky. Normal gross wear finger cheese. Okay, so I'm supposed to put this pry tool under here and just carefully, carefully move that up. I did not like the sound of that. Uh, yep, I broke it. I felt like I was being careful. Okay, getting it from under there. We'll pull this up carefully. I don't want to break this sticky tape. I broke a screen. Okay, that's out of there. Use the Phillips screwdriver again to take this plate off. And there is a little button you need to push in and that releases back there. There we go. There's nothing magical about the kind of soap I'm using. Just make sure to use something that's safe on plastics. I'm using a dye-free laundry detergent. So again, this motherboard is pretty clean. I'm not worried about it too much, but we're gonna touch up this speaker on the other side. Using isopropyl alcohol here, 99% solution. It dries fast, is safe to use on electronics. Here we're gonna use BW100, an electronic contact cleaner. I like to use that whenever I do these, these clicky buttons. Just put a little bit inside of there, click it around a few times and that helps those just respond nice and crisp. Just a little bit of Q-tip dusting. And I'm gonna use a microfiber cloth to clean any of the metal parts. And use a microfiber cloth as well, very carefully on the screen cover. There's still some small scratches in there, but it looks pretty good. I like to let these plastic pieces soak for a little bit, so I always put them in and then clean the rest of the components and then come back to it with my toothbrush. And by that point, usually they clean pretty easy. So I'm gonna use this toothpaste to try to get a little bit of the yellow coloring off of these shoulder buttons. It probably won't do much. 
This yellowing can be caused by an actual chemical change that's happening in the plastic with these gray plastics sometimes. Obviously, I made a mistake when taking this apart, and now I have a broken screen. I'm gonna have to do something about that. So I have another Game Boy Advance that I could have practiced on ahead of time and maybe avoided this mistake. As it is, what I'm gonna do is just take this apart, pull the working screen outside of it, and put it inside of this one. Another option would be to order an aftermarket screen online that offers something the original Game Boy Advance doesn't, which is a backlight. Going back to the original Game Boy, but through this Game Boy Advance, Nintendo did not offer backlighting for the screen, so you had to sit under a lamp or in the just perfect amount of light in order to be able to see what you were doing. And they do make aftermarket screens now that you can put inside of these. If you're interested in seeing me upgrade this Game Boy Advance, with one of those backlit screens, let me know in the comments and we'll consider doing that for a future video. I'm gonna take this apart quickly here and just talk to you a little bit about my process. So we're going hunting for a different screen. This one I know works, so we're gonna take it out and see if it plugs in, if it will give us what we need. Okay, here is the screen. What I did is I put the pry tool inside of there, which I have now learned is actually probably the worst place you could put that pry tool. When I put it under there, if you can, you can see looking at this one, that's basically the only part of the screen that doesn't have a metal protecting edge around. It was just asking to get broken by prying up there, and I honestly don't know why the tutorial that I was watching led me that direction. Um, so instead, I'm going to go underneath this ribbon cable right here, and there's good metal bracing that runs all around the edge. I'm still gonna be very careful, lift very slowly, listening to the sound of that tape come up. I'm not pulling on this cable. I'm just kind of holding it out of the way. I'm actually holding with my pinky finger and ring finger on my hand, holding the system still. I don't wanna pull that cable out. A Little bit more here and we'll have this free. There we go. Want to use that IPA on a Q-tip very carefully to clean just around the edge of here after I have put this back on. There, you can see a little bit. Now I'm gonna just use some glass cleaner, with my microfiber cloth, polish it up. I want this to be very clean before I reattach the screen. Okay, again, those little scratches are there, but it's clean. I wanna be very careful as I set this on here, not to press or actually attach it until I have it exactly where I want it all the way around. So just laying it here gently, get it lined up. I think that will just about do it. Get that cleaned off with a little bit of air and we can set that in there right where it goes. All right, looks good. This cable is not fitting. And I'm not exactly sure if I'm just supposed to put it right here in the middle and kind of line it up. This has been an educational process for me for sure this time. Uh, learning a lot about these Game Boys that I didn't know. One of the things that I now am realizing as I tried lining up and plugging this in and it didn't work is that the Game Boy Advance has two different types of ribbon cable 
that can attach to the screen. The motherboard that I'm using here has a 40 pin ribbon cable, whereas the screen that I was trying to put inside of it is a 32 pin cable. Thanks to working with Steve at Tronix Fix, fortunately here around the shop we have parts. So I'm gonna have to go look through the rest of our scraps and see if we have another one of these Game Boy Advances that has a 40 pin screen. Otherwise, I might be forced to figure out another solution for this project. Okay, we have found one. The first system I got into and it's a 40 pin cable, I can take this out of here and use it. There it is. Now I have a replacement screen installed inside of here with the correct 40 pin ribbon cable. As you can see, perfectly matches up and it's in good. So let's finish putting this back together. I'm just gonna clean this on off switch. those metal plates back in there and then that just goes right down inside of there nice you just want to line that up push it down till it clicks on screen works good and I think we're in business I do miss the backlighting that comes on pretty much any modern system or anything beyond this original Game Boy Advance it's still fun though I hope somebody out there learns from my mistake doesn't break their screen and enjoys cleaning and restoring ish their Game Boy Advance